What is going on, guys? What is going on? It's Jack2505, and I'm back after a few weeks. Hiatus there. My man flops. I should be on this every week. But I'm back. And I'm back for the big one, man. Or after the big one. This is episode 11 of the 2505 Sports Podcast. It is Wednesday, the 23rd of October 2019. You can come visit me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jack2505 underscore. You can also follow me on Twitter if you search for at Jack2505 underscore. And this will also be uploaded to my YouTube channel, which is Jack2505. Let's hope my headphones don't drop on the floor then. So please like, share and subscribe and feel free to share your your comments below. There's also um, a link to my Discord in the in the description the discord is a really good server that allows you to keep in touch with me and catch up with the latest news concerning 2505 sports and 2505 gaming which i also do so i've missed a couple of weeks but we are now on match day nine of the premier league now i've changed things a little bit where it's going to be a little bit a lot more basically liverpool focused um i think that's where um, i'm going to be going in the meantime but obviously we'll, we'll be talking about others, other teams and the Premier League as a whole. But it's going to be uh, a lot more Liverpool focused now. So uh, that's, that's, that is my team. So let's get on with it. Match day night. Right. It was the big one. And it was the one where I was the most cocky. I had the biggest mouth. I was terrorizing my United fans. Well, I've been terrorizing them since the beginning of the season, but it slightly intensified in the last couple of weeks after we had to wait for that damn international break to finish. But it's done, and the games happened. And it was Manchester United against Liverpool at Old Trafford on Sunday the 20th at half past four. Now, like I said, going into this game, just like every Liverpool fan on the planet, I was confident as hell. First of all, I was 95% confident we wouldn't get beat and around 80% confident that we would win. Only one happened, obviously. So, going into this game, you know, um, United came off their defeat to Newcastle, and um, I think it was our, our win against Sheffield United, or I think it was Leicester. Well, no, I think it was Sheffield United. Sorry, sorry, Leicester City. So, obviously, you know, we've been we won eight games in a bounce. Confidence is high. There's no reason for us to go to Old Trafford and think we were going to get anything less than three points. I think the international break, obviously I don't want to make any excuses. I think the international break did benefit Man United because obviously you know that old cliche, when you're losing you need a break and when you're winning you want to keep playing. I have to give it to Man United, I have to be grown up about this, that I think that they played better than Liverpool. Not, not outplayed them, but they disrupted Liverpool in a way that Liverpool weren't able to play their game for about 75 80 minutes and I have to be honest there did it get into Liverpool's heads um in regards to you know everyone said the game was going to be a walkover including me including me was it the case where Liverpool players went there and thought it was going to be easy I don't think so I don't think so at all I think what happened was that the Liverpool players went there and just got sucked into the emotion, which I was begging them not to do. Obviously, they don't know me and they can't hear me, obviously, but I just thought, please, play the game, not the occasion. That's why I said in my mind every single day before this game, play the game, not the occasion. They, If they want to be champions... If Liverpool want to be champions, they have to look beyond the it's Man United. And that's not being arrogant enough like that. But the reason why I'm annoyed that Liverpool did not win this game is not because they didn't beat a shit Man United team. It's not even that. It's because I know deep down in my heart of hearts, if you would have put Manchester City at Old Trafford on that Sunday, they would have battered them. And that's the difference. That is the difference. For Liverpool to win the title, they have to be better than Man City. Which is me saying that makes me want to collapse. Because Man City are, for me, arguably the best Premier League team I have ever seen. And if they win the Premier League this season, I think that that's more or less cemented. For three seasons, I don't think you would have seen better. 
look at the way Liverpool are playing at the moment. For City to top them, to let's say catch them up, take them over and win the league, City will have to be beyond excellent to do that, to keep Liverpool at bay. So, it, uh, you know, in the build-up to the game, it was massive. Obviously, you know, with Sky, BT, the radio, hitting it, Liverpool games, Man United, the biggest game in the world, blah, blah, blah. I think it's the over, most overhyped game in the world. To be honest, it's a massive game. Don't get me wrong. I do think it's a bit overrated, though. Because in, in, in years, how many times have Liverpool and United been fighting each other for the title? Most of the time, in recent years, in most, most of the time, it's been United fighting for the title and Liverpool just being a good team. But now, only recently, it's now Liverpool fighting for the title and United are awful. So it's never been a fixture where, you know, Liverpool and United are the two best teams in the country. Liverpool and United are fighting for the title. Liverpool and United are both in, uh, you know, semi-finals of European Cups. That never happens. It's either we're shit, they're good. We're good, they're shit. Or it's, a or it's a bang average game. Most of the time, it's a bang average game. I can't remember the last time. Liverpool and Man United played each other and it was a bad boy game. It never ever happens. It is a very, it's a it's a sexy feature. It's got so much history behind it. Two of the most successful teams in the United Kingdom. But the games are always stinkers. So going into the game, I was confident just like every other, uh, every other Liverpool fan. United, they did get off to the better start. Not giving Liverpool much space. Um, you know, get getting stuck in disrupting Liverpool's rhythm. When Liverpool finally did get a chance, when Mane did that um, that sort of run down the wing and then pass it into Firmino, and if Firmino, I mean, in any other day that would have gone in, but I just think you know you're just a bit of a soft tap and then the easy easy save for the hair. So you know, I think Firmino could have done done a lot better than that. Then we get to the goal. Now, Origi's foul, to be honest, I thought it was a bit soft. Even I'll admit that. It's one of those things where if that would have been in, I don't know, any other situation or any other part of the ground, it could have gone down. But I don't think it was a foul. I, 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 I can see what Origi was trying to do. It was soft. And, you know, Liverpool, they were punished for it. They were punished. So I'm I'm gonna admit it and say the goal should should have stood. When they did the VAR, I looked at that and thought ah, it's too soft and they're not gonna give it, and they didn't. So, well, you know, well done to Marcus Rashford. He seems to he, he's got a sick record against Liverpool. He always scores against us. But no, well done to him. You know, the United took advantage. Good finish, one nil to them. And then Liverpool almost replied quick with a Mane goal which was mm, hate to admit it rightly ruled out for handball it was a handball uh, and if this was any other era any other season it would have been 1-1 so VAR you know saved Man United and punished Liverpool there so VAR was right there's no re there's not really much to argue about from any Liverpool fan it did touch his hand it was handball and the VAR stroke referee were right to rule it out and then but from there Liverpool just continued to just I think this was probably the worst I've seen Liverpool play in a league game maybe for two years maybe for two years United they just sort of thought yeah we, you know they packed up the midfield didn't really let Liverpool do their thing and Liverpool, they really disappointed me for about 75, 80 minutes. I just thought to myself, you know, you're better than these lot. You're European champions. And you're going to Old Trafford and just getting sucked into the emotion. I don't know what it is about that ground. We just can't win there. We can't win there. It's like it's like we, we, we could sign Messi, go to Old Trafford and still get a bloody draw. Then Lalana, which, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Lalana. And I'm not just saying that because he scored. I think he's a talented, talented player. And I think he's just been so unlucky with injuries. So unlucky. And you know what? He's my man in the match. Yeah, it's easy to give it to him because he scored. But just because of, of you know of everything he's been through, 
a lot of the injuries doesn't really get a lot of games he came on and he scored and you know what i hope he gets more game time now i hope he keeps himself fit and i want him to stay at liverpool i don't want him to leave i really don't because i think he's still got something to offer even though he's been there for a while but the, the injuries that he, he's been very unlucky with it and liverpool they've they've got something there with him and they need to hold on to it allison um you know it was, it was good to see allison back it, it looks like we we didn't well essentially adrian done very well in his absence he done very well but allison came back strong um didn't really do anything wrong the defenders is a bit disappointed with Trent. Trent didn't have the best of games. I thought Robertson played well. Van Dijk was okay. Everyone going nuts over. Oh, Rest have made him fall over. No, he didn't. Whatever. Uh, Matic played okay. Um, Fabino. Uh, Fabino, he, he didn't do too bad. Uh, let's have a look here. Genie Wijnaldum, he played well. Mane had a quiet game. Firmino had a mega quiet game. I thought Origi was playing well. I thought he was unlucky to be substituted off, to be honest. But I've got to mention him. I've got to talk about him because he absolutely pisses me off. And that's Jordan Henderson, man. Jordan Henderson, I'm telling you this right now, yeah. If you've been listening, if you've been listening to my to my streams and my podcasts, and if you know me personally. You know how I feel about this guy. I really, really want someone to tell me what he does well. What does Jordan Henderson do well? He occupies a very good position. He can't run. He can't pass. He can't tackle. He never scores. The opposition are not scared of him. And if he was, if we were to get an alert, a text message a tweet trending whatever that jordan henderson is out for the rest of the season would that affect liverpool no it wouldn't would that affect our title chances no it wouldn't no it would not out of all our key players he is the least important out of them all the least that is a fact liverpool i don't understand why they do not give virgil van dyke the armband it's so obvious it's in your face he's so ineffective it's unbelievable jordan henderson when he was substituted the united fans basically laughed at him how can your captain be substituted in a big boy game and he's not injured that that's a question i've got for myself and any liverpool fan out there and do our rivals and opposition teams fear jordan henderson you know they don't they call him a shit Steven Gerrard. And comparing him to Steven Gerrard is an insult. I, I wouldn't even give him the the title of a shit Steven Gerrard. Because a shit Steven Gerrard, Gerrard now is better than him. Gerrard now, who's what, 39 years old and manager of Rangers Football Club. I would rather have Gerrard now than him. He's terrible. Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting about jordan henderson but that's how i feel about him if anything i'm gonna probably go more in depth into the jordan henderson situation the worst liverpool captain ever anyway in the other results we had everton beat west ham uh 2-0 on the early kickoff on saturday we had aston villa beat uh brighton 2-1 we we're bournemouth 0-0 against norwich chelsea chelsea winning against newcastle so boy lamps lamps are doing all right in the moment but he's doing well he's quietly doing his job um, no one's really talking about Lamps because everyone's talking about Solskjaer. You know what, yeah. Well done to Lampard so far, yeah. I was tipping him to have a bad season. We all know things ain't done yet, but I was... Um, I'm actually happy for him. He's getting Chelsea to play a way that he wants. So, well done to Lamps. you got Leicester. Boy, Leicester are on form at the moment. Beating um, Burnley 2-1. Jamie Vardy getting a little bit of stick from the fans regarding his wife and Colleen. Jesus Christ, man. Sorry, I'm not even going to give that even more time. That's just some stupidness. Anyway, 2-1 to Leicester. Um, so, Leicester, they're up to fourth at the moment. So, well, sorry, fourth, sorry. Third, level on points with Chelsea. Tottenham Hotspur. 1-1 with Watford. What is going on with Tottenham? What is going on? I'm hearing people are punching each other up. People are sleeping with each other's wives. I don't know whether that's true. At the moment, boy, Spurs are in, what, seventh spot? 
not going too well at, um, I was going to say White Hart Lane. Where they are they again? The new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, whatever it's called. Wolves won, Southampton won. And then you got Crystal Palace new Man City too. I mean, Man City, I mean, I'm shaking in my boots with those guys, man. They, they just went to crowd and they just tucked them in easy, bro, man. It's all long. And then you had, the, obviously, the Man United-Liverpool game, 1-1. One, one. And then the Monday night game with Arsenal can't beat by Sheffield United. <laughs> oh boy, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. So Arsenal fans, they're not happy with Emery at the moment, the players, the tactics. So, things are about, you know, I think one thing I'll say to the Arsenal fans, don't overreact. Don't overreact because um, you're still in contention for top four, still tight. So, obviously, Liverpool's still top. Then Man City, Chelsea, sorry, beg your pardon. Liverpool, Man City, Leicester, Chelsea, then Arsenal. Uh, who occup and then Crystal Palace who, who occupied the top six. Then you've got Spurs, Burnley, Sheffield United, Bournemouth, West Ham, uh, Villa, Wolves, United in 14th. Then you've got Everton, Brighton, Southampton, Newcastle, Norwich and Watford occupying the bottom three. So, that was uh, basically match day nine, episode 11 of 2505 Sports. Do apologize about my absence over the last few weeks. So like I said, I'm going to keep things centered around Liverpool, but I will address the other teams also. Next episode will be in a couple of days in which I'll be talking about Liverpool's away game to Genk in the Champions League. And then we'll move on to the weekend in which Liverpool will be entertaining Spurs, which I'm pretty confident Liverpool are going to tuck them in. Because the Liverpool, you know, they'll, the, the, they'll be unchanged, free, they'll be back at Anfield to to bury Spurs it won't be easy but I predict Liverpool probably beat them 2-1 minimum 2-1 anyway I've been Jack2505 this is 2505 Sports the streaming sports chat I want to thank you very much for listening I would hope this episode would have been better in terms of Liverpool would have went there read the script well read my script and went to Old Trafford and battered them but they didn't but then again in football you don't always get what you want and it would have been overkill if we would have beating United and Solskjaer would have been sat by now so um, let them have their win anyway thank you very much for listening and uh, speak to you soon